Despite the limitations that came with the new normal, we serve a faithful God who is not bound by limits and continues to radically move in the lives of the next generation. When every effort shifted online, this provided a unique avenue for us to widen our reach. Seasons may have changed, but the mission stays the same. The gospel will be preached, students will be reached, and more leaders will be raised. We held 640 outreach events with over 33,000 participants. Because of this, more than 1,700 new students are now going through one-to-one. -one. We had 105 weekly youth services running with an average attendance of 3,200 students watching live. We are reaching students in 630 campuses. And ongoing, there are about 2,000 Victory Group leaders leading more than 2,300 Victory Groups with over 11,600 students in attendance. 429 students went through Victory Weekend, with 127 of them being baptized in water. As campus missionaries, what we really hope is that our students will grow closer to God and grow stronger in their relationship with Him. For them to realize that He is their refuge, He is their peace. The fear that they feel in the future, the fear that they feel in the future, if the Gospel is in their hearts, I am looking forward to what we will do in the future. Our hope is that in the midst of all of the challenges that they face, that these students would know that there is a source of hope that never runs out, that never changes, that never fades in the midst of everything. And that the only way that they can really have true rest, true peace, and true hope in this season is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. As we look back at 2020, we have seen so much of God's faithfulness. Truly, His ways are higher than ours. On behalf of Every Nation Campus, we would like to thank you for your partnership, prayers, encouragement, and support, even in this challenging time. Your partnership plays a crucial role in our campus ministry. Together, let's look forward to a new year in faith that God will do even more amazing things. As we look back on this tumultuous year, we are truly grateful for His grace that has been with us in every situation. While we have no idea what 2021 has in store for us, we know how we will start the year with a week of prayer, fasting, and consecration. I'm pleased to announce that our 2021 theme is Awesome God. Starting with our week of prayer and consecration and continuing through the whole year, we want to focus on the greatness and the goodness of God. I want you to join us January 11 through 15, 2021, as we consecrate ourselves and seek God and know more about our awesome God. Every year as a church, we pray and fast at the start of the year and mid-year because we want to know God more, go deeper in the Word, and be in faith for what He will do in and through us. When we fast, we declare that we want God more than food by denying ourselves for a time. Remember, pray about the kind of fast you will undertake and commit to it ahead of time. Do not decide on a day-to-day -day basis. Ask God for grace. Together. Let's know God more and hear from Him during our prayer and fasting.
online worship service. My name is Haya and I'm one of the campus missionaries of Victory Davao. But before we worship God today, let me read to you in Psalm chapter 51 verses 10 to 12. It says here, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Lord, this is our declaration, that as we worship you today, we will be reminded of your faithfulness, and we will have that joy, and we will be reminded that you are the one who saved us, and that you deserve all the praises and worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship God. Hi, church. Happy New Year, everyone. Are you all excited and expectant this 2021? And we're going to start the year by doing something we all love, and that's praising and worshiping our God because He deserves it, and that's how we're going to start our year. Are you ready to worship God?
decided you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why we can trust you in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we continue to worship God through our giving, let me share to you in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 to 21. It says here, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Left on our own, hindi naman talaga natin kayang ibigay kay God yung para kay God. Sometimes parang, ha, 5% na lang siguro, hindi na 10%. Or wag na lang siguro this month, next month na lang pag okay na yung finances. Pero sabi sa verse na binasa natin, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. It is the Holy Spirit working within us that enables us to give to God the 10%, not just the 5%, or more pa sa 10%. It is the power of God at work within us that enables us to be generous, not just to the people of God, but also to the lost people. And that's my prayer, that as we give today, we give glory to God throughout all generation, forever and ever. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you that we are reminded that you are a generous God and that you will be the one to enable us to give and to be generous at all times. Lord, thank you for the blessing that you have given us. I pray, Lord, that you will be continue to be a blessing to others as well. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, meron tayong three ways to give. Una, pwede tayong mag-bank transfer to any of these bank accounts na nasa screen natin ngayon. And you can send yung deposit slip nyo sa davao at victory.org.ph. And pangalawa, pwede kayong magbigay through GCash and Paymaya by scanning the QR codes na nasa screen din natin ngayon. And lastly, pwede kayong pumunta sa Victory Davao Church Building and pwede nyo i-drop yung offering nyo sa ating offering box. God bless us again. Good day everyone and welcome to our online Sunday service. My name is Chito and I'm one of the full-time staff here in Victory Davao. And I'd like to welcome you to our service today. And uh, I hope that you're doing great sa homes ninyo. And I also hope na yung start ng 2021 nyo is already good, no? Full of God's blessing and full of the promises of God. Now, you, you know, the first month of the year is always a fresh start, di ba? Na ito yung panahon na we look back at our previous year, 2020, and we are hopeful na this will be a fresh start for all of us. Laging ganun, di ba? Pag New Year, kapag January of every year. And you know, it carries hope with it. Na we, we have this hope that we can hold on to as we go through 2021. Now, at the same time, I also understand that it also may cause people to be anxious, di ba? Like for example, uh, what if yung plans ko for 2021 will fail just like it failed in 2020? Or for example, what if there's another virus coming or another kind of sickness na papunta sa atin? Or maybe um, you may be asking yourself, will I experience prosperity this year? Or will I have financial luck this year? Or maybe for some of us, single pa rin ba ako in 2021? Or childless pa rin ba ako in 2021? You know, there are a lot of sources of anxiety that may creep into our minds this year. And that's why we need to understand kung ano ba tong anxiety na to? And how do we cope with this anxiety in our hearts and minds? Now, according to the American Psychological Association, ito kasi um, we need to define anxiety in, in terms of scientific basis. No? According to the APA or the American Psychological Association, anxiety is an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes. Meaning to say, 
anxiety is a physical uh, situation. There is something physical about it. And it's, it's normal for us to be anxious at times. We experience it from time to time. Like for example, uh, stage fright for example, or yung halimbawa may ipopropose ka na project. You have a sense of anxiety there. Or for example, you're crossing the street, di ba? Baka may biglang dumaan na motor or, or jeep na hindi mo nakita. Then that's also a, 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 an anxiety for all of us. And that's normal, no? But when it gets more intense, when it becomes uh, debilitating for us, yung parang hindi na tayo makagalaw because of our anxiety, it may trigger a lot of physical changes in us. And it may even trigger uh, health risks sa atin. No? In fact, sabi sa scientific journals, long-term anxiety and panic attacks can cause your brain to release stress hormones on a regular basis. And this can increase the frequency of symptoms like, for example, headaches, dizziness, uh, depression as well. Or it can also cause rapid heart rate. It may cause uh, high blood pressure, nausea, shallow breathing. No? There are physical manifestations of anxiety. And it also has uh, real health risks. That's why anxiety really has a physical element to it. Hindi lang siya yung gawagawa ng minds natin. There is really a, a physical side to anxiety. Um, even medical professionals can diagnose anxiety in a person, di ba? Of course, ako hindi naman ako medical professional, but um, I, I know of some medical professionals who can diagnose this kind of situation or condition. And it's much like any physical illness, no? That it can be diagnosed, it can be um, addressed as well, physically or medically speaking. But yes, anxiety is physical, but who among you agree that, that there's also a spiritual element to anxiety? Na, kubaga, just like anything we experience in life, whether it's your uh, relationships, whether it's your health, or whether it's your finances, uh, all of these things are, yes, physical, but they are also spiritual in a sense. And just like anxiety, anxiety also involves a spiritual side to it. That's why we hear this uh, idea of spiritual warfare because there is really something going on in the spiritual realm, not only in the physical things that we see. Now, it, I'm not a medical professional again, no? so I cannot share to you about how to cure anxiety in a medical uh, aspect. But what I can share with you is a story in the Bible where we can find truths related to this. Now, if you were with us last week, I shared about Moses being called by God through the burning bush. And today, we're going to talk about the story of Gideon and God calling him for a specific mission. Let me read to you just one verse in Judges chapter 6, verse 11. Sabi doon, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Now, you look at this verse alone, ang dami na nating pwedeng tanungin na very important questions. Siguro isa na dyan, ano yung terebinth? Um, let me answer that. A terebinth is simply a tree. During the time, it was a common tree in, in those days and people went under the terebinth to siguro find shade or to relax under the cool of the morning no? or under the cool of the tree. But uh, more importantly, if you look at this verse, why was Gideon beating wheat in the wine press? Alam naman natin na yung wine press, dun, dun di ba kinakrush yung grapes so that we will produce wine. Pero in Gideon's case, he was using the wine press to beat out wheat or yung grains. Kumbaga pa parang bigas during that time. And also, why was Gideon hiding the wheat from the Midianites? And more importantly, sino ba to sila? Who are the Midianites? Now, to answer these questions, let's backtrack a bit in the earlier verses. Uh, now, because of uh, the disobedience of the people of Israel back then, they were given by God to the hand of the Midianites. And you know, uh, we can observe no, how the Israelites lived under the rule of these Midianites. 
Verse 3 and 4 says, For whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance in Israel and no sheep or ox or donkey. So we can understand here the threat of the Midianites against the people of Israel. Now, the, the Midianites ravaged the camps. They took the crops and the animals and they left the Israelites with no sustenance. Ubusan talaga in terms of their food and supplies. And this was probably a source of anxiety for the Israelites during their time. So that's why Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press. Kasi nagtatago si Gideon. Kasi if you, if you imagine it, no? if he did it in the normal area where, we, where they do it, sa threshing floor, doon nila uh, parang binabayo or binibit yung wheat. No? If, if Gideon did it in the threshing floor, then the Midianites would be there waiting and they're going to devour everything. They're going to take everything. So Gideon had to come up with a strategy so that they can still have food to eat. Now, that may be you today. You may be thinking about your own strategies when you're trying to look for ways to earn a living despite this current situation. Or maybe you're trying to restore your family's relationships that have been broken through time. Or maybe you're just trying to survive this pandemic, this quarantine season, and you're really having a hard time sustaining it. Now, if you're thinking that way, welcome to the club of Gideon. He's, he, he may be thinking that way as well. And you know, whatever challenge or source of anxiety that you have right now, I believe this reminder in verse 12 is for you. According to verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said to him, The Lord is with you. God is with you, church. And you know, we've been reminded of this truth time and time again because this is a promise that God has fulfilled and is continuing to fulfill in our lives on a daily basis to this very day. But you know, I understand. Alam ko, it's easier said than done. Now, if you look at the story of Gideon, do you think he responded with relief or contentment? Now, when the angel of the Lord told him, the Lord is with you, ang reaction ni Gideon was, I thank you, Lord. No, that was not his response. If you look at verse 13, Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. If you imagine no, kung, kung papano deliver ni Gideon tong lines na to, kung papano niya sinabi to, if we could only hear Gideon, I believe Gideon sounded like he was frustrated, that he was already resigned. Lord, why us? Where are his promises? And worst of all, Gideon said, if the Lord is with us, if the Lord is with us. Doubt was slowly creeping into the mind of Gideon. And you know what? Doubt leads to anxiety. Doubt was creeping into the mind of Gideon and he seemed to have lost faith. He seemed to have lost any hope in his situation. And as a result, he had to come up with his own way. He had to come up with strategies because he felt like God was not present anymore. He felt like God was not with him. You know, that, does that sound familiar to all of us? Were there times, were there moments in our lives, maybe in 2020, when you felt like God was silent, when you felt like God was not with you, and, you, and so because of this, you had to do things your way. You had to rely on your own strengths, your abilities, your own wisdom, because you felt like God was not with us. 
The idea that you have to control your life, that you, the idea that you have to control the things around you, that will definitely cause anxiety for all of us. And on top of that, we know that God is calling us to do something for His purpose, di ba? And you know, that's exactly what He did to Gideon. In verse 14, sabi doon, The Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? In the NIV, it says, Go in the strength that you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? You know, it's one thing to try surviving each and every day with our own strengths. But it's another thing to use that little strength that you have to do the impossible. And in the case of Gideon, that seemed impossible. You know, going to Midian and saving Israel out of Midian's hand, that's impossible. That's why Gideon responded in verse 15, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. It's like Gideon was saying, Lord, I can only do this. Ito lang, beating the wheat in the wine press. Yun lang yung kaya kong gawin, Lord. What you're saying, I cannot do that. Pwede ba, Lord, ibigay mo na lang yung protection? Pwede ba bang ibigay na lang yung provision for all of us? Tapos, Lord, ikaw na bahala sa Midianites. Just like Gideon, isn't that how we also think of ourselves? Na we feel like we cannot do the impossible. Sometimes we feel like we cannot do the things that God wants us to do because we are limited. We feel a sense of insecurity within us. And you know what? Insecurity also leads to anxiety. Now, when we feel like we're limited, we cannot do anything about our situation, we feel anxious about it. But you know what? In verse 16, this is what the Lord was assuring Gideon. The Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Grabe consistency, Lord, no? When, when God showed up in Gideon, what he said was, the Lord be with you. And you know, Gideon had doubts during the time. Even in the insecurities of Gideon, the same response God gave to Gideon, I will be with you. What are we saying here? What, are, what is God trying to tell us? Whether it's doubt, whether it's insecurity that's causing you to be anxious, the Lord is assuring us, God is with us, church. And therefore, whatever impossibility that you face in 2021, whatever audacious faith goal that you have, as we go to our prayer and fasting, no matter if it's as intimidating as the Midianites, be assured that God is with us. God is with us and God has placed us in this particular situation not because of the strength that we have, but because God is with us. And so because of this, Gideon understood the presence of God in his life. And in verse 22, Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear, you shall not die. Peace be to you. You know, when our eyes are fixed on God, we begin to perceive how glorious and good and how faithful God has been in our life and continues to be so. When we embrace the truth that God is awesome, we will experience peace in our hearts and minds. Peace does not mean that violence will end. Peace does not mean that this is the end of hostility or the end of struggles. 
You know, when we say God is with us, it doesn't change the fact that struggles will still be with us. Challenges, threats to our faith will still be with us. In fact, John chapter 16, verse 33 says, In the world, you will have tribulation. That's a given. But at the same time, Jesus also assures us of this in that same verse. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. What kind of peace is this? It's the kind of peace knowing that God will never leave us nor forsake us even if we sometimes doubt in our circumstances. God will always be with us. It's the kind of peace that completes us and allows us to do the impossible despite our insecurities, despite our limitations. And so according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, it's a kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. You will never understand why this peace we experience in God that even if we experience difficulties, even if we face the impossible, in Christ, we experience peace. And we will never understand that. Sabi sa Philippians 4 verse 7. But when we believe that God is bigger than our battles, if we believe that our battles, God is gonna fight for us, then we will experience this peace that God is willing to give us. So as I end, let me leave you with these verses in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Trust God, who gives us peace that covers all anxieties. Let me repeat that. Trust God, who gives us peace that covers all anxieties. If you have doubt in your minds and hearts, remind yourself of your personal testimonies. Remind yourself of the many milestones when God showed up, when God fulfilled His promises in your life. Trust that God is with us. And if you have insecurities, remind yourself that you're not going to the battle alone, that you're not going to the battle using your own strengths. Trust that God is with us. Let me lead every one of us into prayer. Lord God, as we begin to understand how amazing your power is, how amazing your grace is in our life, thank you, Lord, because right now you're reminding us that you are with us. And that's more than enough for us, God, that even despite the things that we may be facing in 2021, despite the mistakes that we made in the past year, despite the regrets, despite the frustrations, Lord, thank you because you never fail and that you will always be with us. Lord, let your presence be our anchor, God, that this will cause us, Lord, to have faith in you, that despite what we see in the physical world, Lord, you are with us, God, always. And because of this, we will let go of any anxieties, God, and we will experience peace, God, the peace that, that Lord, covers all anxieties, the peace, God, that will assure us that you will never leave us or forsake us, the peace, Lord, that will cover our insecurities because you will fight the battles with us the kind of peace that transcends and surpasses all understanding. Thank you, God, because you are the God of peace. And that's why, Lord, we can lift up to you the praise and the glory, Lord, that you deserve. Lord, have your way in our lives. 
that as we start 2021, Lord, that we will hold on to your promises. We will hold on to your presence in our life, God. And this will be more than enough for us, God, that, that we will experience peace knowing this powerful truth. Lord, we lift up to you the praise, the glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Right now, church, as we end, let me pray a prayer of blessing for all of us. And listen to these verses because it also talks of peace that only God can give. Let me pray to you this prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have a great week ahead, church. And thank you so much for joining our online Sunday services. May the God of peace be always with you. God bless you.